In this demo, we want to show an end-to-end -end demonstration of a user using the Contract Express document automation technology linked up to OpenLaw's smart contract integration. We'll start with a promissory note example. So in a promissory note, somebody known as the maker will promise to repay money, but in this case, we're going to be exchanging a blockchain-based digital representation of a currency using a popular standard on the blockchain called ERC-20. First, here's an agreement of some legal text. I've highlighted some of the terms that have been annotated for Contract Express to use through its dictionary. We only filled out enough fields to get the demonstration going. The promissory note has quite a few terms to it. So we created a template with this example. Let's go ahead and go through the document creation process with the, with the Contract Express base template. It's a little squished here on my screen to fit it into the video. Now, one thing I want to come back to that you probably saw me enter, but I didn't explain is the maker's Ethereum address. If you're not familiar with the blockchain, then you can think of the address as somebody's bank account and routing number. This is how the digital tokens will be routed. So next, we're gonna save this. And so next, I'm gonna show you some middleware we built to integrate OpenLaw with Contract Express. So this screen is a user interface of the middleware that connects through Contract Express's API to our OpenLaw API. You can see that the document ID and contract ID are, are highlighted here, which are unique identifiers on the Contract Express and Open Law sides. By highlighting this entry, we can see that the contract also has a smart contract component, which is running with some placeholder text. And we can see that the answers that we were provided on Contract Express here, such as the maker's Ethereum address, are now showing up through this middleware layer. So now I'm going to scroll down and show you a little more user interface we built to reveal information that got stored on the blockchain. In just a moment, I'll show you the open law side that makes this happen. By entering the maker's Ethereum address that we talked about before here and clicking this button, we can see that certain information got stored on the blockchain. This information is available because of a browser plugin I have installed called MetaMask, which gives us a gateway into the blockchain. It's not necessary for um, the execution of the middleware layer, but it's just useful for seeing what's happening in the blockchain. And one thing I wanna highlight is this line here. This token balance was run independently of the other queries, and it shows that the token balance after the smart contract was executed is now this. So the tokens are the ERC20 representation of whatever they could be. So they could be digital assets, they could be something like a stable coin, they could be real value, or they could just be an accounting value. Next, we're doing some thinking around how to integrate the smart contract components that we've already created on the open law side. The idea here is that, and what you can see on screen, is that from the contract express side, users would have access to a number of predefined and pre-deployed smart contracts on the blockchain that they can automate with open law and contract express combined. So thanks for watching.